Y'all don't even know how many times I wanted to film this video and couldn't because this is what's been happening outside my door for the last four fucking days. Yes, all day long, that is the sound that I would hear right outside my door for three to five minutes at a clip all goddamn day. I've had my little table laid out with all my stuff so I could do this get ready with me with all my favorites. I just couldn't do it, man. I was just like, well, maybe I'll do it as a voiceover, but I didn't really want to because I wanted to do the old chit chat, get ready with me, let's cut it up, let's have some fun, we have so much fun. Thank God it's Sunday and those assholes aren't here today. They will be back again tomorrow ruining my life. So now at long last, even though it's almost February, I can show you guys all of my 2015 beauty favorites by putting them all over my face and my chest a little bit. Just not in my hair this time. Let's get into it. All right, you guys, we're starting off looking a little crusty, which is the way all of my bare-faced videos start because I wear sunscreen every single day. But before we fix that, I'm gonna start with eyes because I always start with eyes if I'm gonna wear eyeshadow because of fallout. So let's talk about my eye primer favorites because that's the first step. My favorite eye primer of 2015 and thus far of all time is the NARS eye primer. It's the Pro Prime Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base. This one is really good if you have oily skin and you find that no matter what eyeshadow formula you try, it's creasing on you because I found that this one seemed to curb that problem for me. A runner up in the eyeshadow base department, um, and it's not a true runner up because I use it for a different purpose. It's the Too Faced Shadow Insurance Glitter Glue. On occasions when, you know, it's a special event or something like that, I might want to go for some glitter and I found that that one really helps prevent fallout if I have a super glittery shadow. It definitely either cuts it down or eliminates it. So I really have liked that product too. Let's talk about favorite eyeshadows of 2015. My favorite eyeshadow palette or quad of 2015 is the Charlotte Tilbury Golden Goddess. I've been getting into Charlotte Tilbury makeup pretty much since 2015. 14 when her line first launched at Nordstrom and it's been a problem ever since I went to the event where it launched I met her and got to take a picture with her Humble brag and she's been taking my money pretty much ever since my Charlotte Tilbury collection has been growing over the past two years I must say so I've gotten a pretty good feel for her range and I really 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 like it Pretty much everything I've tried has been dope This particular eyeshadow quad is good because it's great for daytime looks daytime glamorous looks or nighttime looks. I feel like it's super versatile and that's why I like it because I don't really go for those really severe makeup looks. Her eyeshadow quads are all very user friendly. They're arranged so that it's a prime shade, a an enhanced shade, a smoke shade, and a pop shade. The pop shade is generally meant to be applied with your finger. It's usually like a glittery overlay that you will lay on top in the center of your lid at the very end of each look. So they're super user friendly. If you don't know much about makeup like me or you're just kind of getting started out, they're really awesome because they'll trick you into thinking that you're awesome at makeup. This is just the prime shade, which according to her, you can use in lieu of an actual eyeshadow primer. I still use an eyeshadow primer anyway because, you know, I have oily skin and I just don't like to risk it. Charlotte Tilbury is a luxury line, not even high end, like one step above high end, which is luxury. So she's lumped in with like Chanel, Tom Ford, lines like that. If any of you guys would be curious to see me do like a full Charlotte Tilbury collection, just everything that I have and you know, what I think of it, I'd be happy to do that. So just let me know in the comments. As far as runners up for eyeshadows, I also have really loved the Becca Ombre Rouge eyeshadow palette this year. It's all pretty much mattes and satin shades. There's no like shimmery, glittery shades in here. And I just found that this was a really great workhorse, versatile palette for me. I purchased this one at the same time I purchased the Ombre Nudes palette from Becca. I decided to get both because I actually wanted this one more. This is the Ombre Nudes. As you can see, this one's more cool tone than the Ombre Rouge. 
And this one's been great too, but I was surprised at how much more I was reaching for the Ombre Rouge because I tend to prefer cool toned shadows on me. I like how they contrast with my golden warm skin. I have two single shadows of the year just because I've loved these two colors. I picked these both up at the Fame Expo and I did a video talking about that and doing a makeup look with some of the stuff I got, which I'll link right here. And these two shadows are by Stelazzi. This one's PS44 and this one's PS37. These two, I've just gone to so many times they're so so good in fact I may even use a little bit of the PS 37 as my pop shade instead of the one that's in this uh, quad because it's even more sparkly and glittery so we'll see how I feel you would have seen me wearing those shadows in the makeup look I was wearing in my holiday lookbook I'll link that here too and then cream shadows I love this year one is from Maybelline it is nude compliment unfortunately this was a limited edition but I didn't get it when it came out. I got it on eBay and I got it for pretty cheap. And then my other favorite, perhaps my color of the year is the Charlotte Tilbury Cream Shadow in Verushka. This is just a really, I've never seen another color like this. It's this weird, super complex, green, khaki, olive, with gold and bronze tones to it. It's the kind of color where when I put it on, it looks like I've added several colors to my eyes and created this really complex mochia and it's just one color on my lid. I wore that one in a recent video, so I'll link that either here or in the description box or both. So those are all the runners up for my favorite shadows of the year. I'm loath to even call those runners up because all of those are pretty much my bottom bitches of 2015. And still, I love all of those products. Those are the ones where I can count on them. You know, if I'm going on a trip or something and I wanna make sure that I have looks that are easy for me to do and that I know will always turn out great, I can count on any of those products. So now I'm just running the enhanced shade along the outer portion of my eye and through my eye socket. I'm gonna take that smoke shade, I'm gonna run that along my lash line and my outer corner of my eye. The brush I'm using is also my favorite eyeshadow brush, period, hands down, all time. It's the Paula Dorf Sheer Crease Brush. It is perpetually sold out on her website, but you might be able to find it on Amazon or something. This one brush in any of my Charlotte Tilbury palettes, I can do my whole eye and not need anything else. It's so great. Even with running my mouth and stopping to talk about the other things I've liked, this has taken no time to create this eyeshadow look, which is what I love about Charlotte's palettes. They're just so, so user-friendly. And again, they just trick you into thinking you're dope at makeup, even if you're not. Another favorite of 2015 for me was reverse curling my eyelashes because that was the key to me finally becoming semi-competent at putting on false eyelashes. Now, I'm not the type to wear false eyelashes particularly often because it just makes no sense. Whenever I see someone walking around in false eyelashes, you know, in the middle of the day on a regular day, it's just like, where are you going? It's an extremely obvious thing and I feel like it's too severe for most situations to wear false eyelashes. But a lot of you guys already know that I have to be on camera fairly often for uh, my job at Cinefix and Tasted. And it has been nice to have the option to put on false eyelashes for that um, once I finally learned how to get them on my eyes somewhat. Because it does look good when I'm on camera. I'm not on Instagram or anything like that or any social networking. I'm not t constantly taking pictures of myself. So I don't need to wear false eyelashes every day. And truthfully, I don't believe anyone does unless you just really, really like to. But I just feel like it's a bit much. Having said all that, reverse curling my eyelashes has been great for the occasions that I do want to wear false eyelashes. And I also have some eyelashes that I think are really great for people who don't want to look like they're in drag makeup day to day. I came across these lashes at Sephora. They are the Sephora Collection Lux False Eyelash, and this is the plume one. They're not crazy long, they're not crazy dense, and I feel like they're really, really good for people who don't wanna look insane. I picked these up during the sale because they are pretty pricey. I believe they're either 17 or $18 regular price, so I got them during the Sephora November sale for 20% off, so that helped a little bit. And they've been really good because I feel like when I wear these, it's not obvious that I'm wearing false eyelashes. It just gives me more length than I would have otherwise. And people are like, oh wow, she's got really good eyelashes. Like that's the look that I believe it gives. I don't feel like it looks like draggy or like super fake. I also picked up these ones. This is the Quill one from the same line. These ones are a little bit more oomph, a little bit more in your face. I feel like these ones are actually better for when I am on camera because these ones are good if I'm going to an event where I'm going to be talking to people. but 
these ones are good if I want to be on camera, but I also don't want to wear like ridiculous eyelashes because that's just not for me. Before I got competent at putting on eyelashes like that, I tried these, which were really good. These are from Kiss. I got them at Walgreens and they're, as you can see, sort of little bunches in little clumps and you can put on however many you want across your eye. Um, this is the short pack. So it came with six sets of the extra short, which I've already used them all up and I, I guess they're all gone. And then short ones. I wish it had been a more even split between the extra short and short because the extra short ones were really great. Those were the ones that gave me the confidence to actually be able to get eyelashes on my eye and walk around and feel like I didn't look ridiculous. I should also mention another thing that helped me with the whole false eyelash thing was the dark tone version of eyelash glue. This one's by Duo. I also have the Revlon one. And I've heard the Kiss one is good too. I always go with the dark one because I feel like it conceals the lash band better for me. And the clear one just, I, I feel like I can see that it's a strip of false eyelashes a lot easier with, with the clear glue. To help conceal that band, I'm also gonna line my eyes and my favorite eyeliner of the year is the Kat Von D Tattoo Liner. This is the one in Mad Max Brown. I've really enjoyed this Kat Von D liner because I feel like it just made my life a lot easier when it came to learning to do winged eyeliner. 2015 was kind of the year that I decided I wanted to get semi-competent, not just at false eyelashes, but at winged liner. And I think I was able to do it because this is just very user-friendly, kind of like how those Charlotte Tilbury palettes are so user-friendly. This can trick you into thinking that, hey, maybe I'm kind of decent at winged liner. I really love this Mad Max brown color because it's, I don't think I had seen like a, a good brown liquid eyeliner before this and as soon as I saw it I was just like oh that's brilliant because it's just so nice for daytime sometimes you don't want a stark black eyeliner during the day you know I normally prefer to do at least a sketch of my liquid eyeliner before I do shadow in case I need to do any cleanup with q-tips but I forgot so there we go, not the best I've ever done with my eyeliner, but also not the worst. Now it's time for just one coat of mascara because I am gonna go ahead and put on some lashes for you guys. I'm using the Voluminous Miss Manga. This is the extra black shade, which I am just trying out. I actually just opened this yesterday. If you've been riding with me for a while, you know I love this mascara. It's just great if you're on the no lash team like I am. And it might be great if you have great lashes, I don't know. And even with just one coat, you can see it does a pretty good job. I can't say I have any honorable mentions for other mascaras I've loved. I mean, I've tried plenty of other mascaras that were decent or pretty good, but nothing stands out in my mind the way this one did. So I wanted to make sure this is the one I used for my favorites video. I'm gonna let that dry while I start getting my lashes ready. So again, we have the plume, which I think are great if you are actually seeing people in person and you don't wanna look like you've done the most. And then we have the quill, which is great for the same, but I would say it's a more nighttime lash. You know, maybe you're going to a party or a club or something, but I also think that these look really nice on camera. So I'm gonna put these on for you guys. One thing I can say that has helped me is if you're having trouble with your lashes lifting at the inner or outer corners like I have, is putting the glue there last because generally when you place your eyelashes down you put them down from the center and then you tuck the corners so if you struggle with putting them on like i do those corners are drying up while you're struggling to get the center down so if you put the glue there last it has a little bit more time to remain tacky while you're getting that center placed and hopefully you'll still be able to um, have the glue do its job and still be wet and tacky enough by the time you tuck the corners. I really try to press that lash band in on the inner corner because that's where I tend to get the most lifting. It happens on the outer corners too sometimes, but it tends to be the inner corner because I have very watery eyes and I feel like that might just be loosening that adhesive. One lash on, one to go. This shit used to stress me out so much, you guys. Like if I knew I wanted to wear false eyelashes to go to like a wedding or something like that, I would be stressing out about it for days in advance and like unable to sleep the night before because I'd be thinking about how much of a struggle it would be to put on the false eyelashes. So it really just does take a lot of practice. I mean, I'm not even awesome at it yet. And maybe I never will be because my eyelashes are so curly. They're so uncooperative. That and not freaking out um, when I get near my eyes with a tweezer because that's another thing that used to just scare me. I'd be afraid that I would have a yip and just stab myself in the eye with a tweezer. And I guess that is still a rather 
possible concern, but it hasn't happened yet. And I think each time I build a little bit more confidence. This is the worst part of false eyelashes is waiting for the glue to get tacky. One thing I don't do is put more mascara on after the falsies are on be because I know a lot of people like to do that to blend them, but I also don't want to shorten how long or how many times I can reuse my false eyelashes because they were fucking 17 or 18 dollars. So I don't do that. All I do is I take this thing, which I originally got to help me put on false eyelashes. It's like the Sephora Bullseye eyelash applicator or something but I don't like it for that because it's too thick for me. I need something smaller and more precise to be able to get behind my eyelashes, so I use regular tweezers. But what this is great for is pressing these together, like just pinching them in with my own eyelashes to help blend them and make it a lot more believable. So that's a new thing that I started doing and I think it helps. So it's cool because you can just sort of slide it in from the side and then pinch. And then I just do that all the way across. It also helps to kind of re-straighten my own lashes again because they do start curling up a bit once I put mascara on them because of the wetness. They start to revert. Now all I need to do is apply some bottom lash mascara and clean up any eyeshadow fallout, which is minimal because it's Charlotte Tilbury and I don't really get fallout with her eyeshadows, but nonetheless, I'll probably just do a little bit of cleanup because I can. And that is why I don't prime my face until my eyes are done. But now it is time to prime my face, and my favorite primer of 2015, and I guess of all time, is the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer. It's my favorite primer of all time because I thought primers were a bunch of bullshit, at least skin primers. Eye primers, I guess I always was on board with for some reason, but when it came to skin and face primers, I was just like, that's a racket, that's a bunch of bullshit. But this is the one primer that I found actually seems to make foundations perform better than they would otherwise. I also really love the Sebium Pore Refiner by Bioderma, and the best thing of all is to mix the two together. So that's usually what I do is I'll take a little bit of the Hourglass and an equal amount of the Bioderma, and that is how I usually prime my face. If I'm going to, I don't always. I don't always prime my face, but when I do, I prefer Dos Equis. I find the Bioderma one really helps to smooth over pores. Well, the Hourglass one enhances the actual performance of the foundation that I'm going to be using. As a matter of fact, the Hourglass foundation is the reason that I discovered that my favorite foundation, which I'm about to use, is my favorite foundation because I did not like the foundation the first time I put it on. And then I tried it again with that primer just on a whim and I was just like, oh my God, holy grail. I just remembered that I never did my pop shade for my eyes. <laughs> So while that primer sits in, I'm gonna do that right now. I'm just gonna take my finger, run it across here. I'm not gonna go with the Salazi one like I thought I might because they do have issues with fallout. I mean, those eyeshadows were about $2 at the Fame Expo, which was a steal and a half considering how much I love them, but I don't wanna risk getting fallout right now and I won't get any with Charlotte, so I'm using her pop shade. Keeping it in the family. And I'm not sure if the difference shows up on camera, but it just creates this nice glisten all across the eye and ties all those other shadows together in a really beautiful way. Okay, now that we've popped, we can move on to foundation. My favorite foundation of 2015 and of all time, I would say, is the Revlon Nearly Naked Foundation in the color Chestnut. This foundation I got 100% on a whim from Ulta. I had a 350 off $10 coupon and I was like, $3 short of $10. I was just like, well, I may as well get something else because then it's basically gonna be free. So I got this from the clearance section. As you can see, it still has a little clearance sticker on it. So I got this for under $4 once the coupon and everything was applied. Unfortunately, this may be getting discontinued. At first I thought it was just this shade was getting discontinued or at least not carried by Ulta because that's why it was on clearance and I noticed that it wasn't being stocked in the actual Revlon display within the store. But now I'm not seeing Revlon Nearly Naked Foundation, period, any shades in any stores whenever I happen to be perusing the Revlon aisle. So I don't know what that means for you, but what it meant for me was going on eBay and getting a couple more bottles in case this is going away because I love this foundation. It is my favorite foundation of all time. My runner up, in case that does go away, is actually not technically a foundation. It's the Charlotte Tilbury again Retoucher Conceal and Treat Stick in shade number eight. 
This I discovered I love as a foundation maybe a year or so ago. I was actually using something else and it wasn't giving me enough coverage. So I decided to use a little bit of this and I was just like, wait a minute. So that was sort of how I discovered that this works not only as a great concealer and it is my favorite concealer period, but it's also a great foundation. I just apply it to the areas where I need coverage, blend it out, and it's just like, oh, I guess I have awesome skin now. So I will be using the Charlotte Tilbury as my concealer today once we get to that part, but for now I'm just going to actually apply some foundation. And I'm applying it to the places where I need coverage. That's how I always do it. I don't just put foundation everywhere, just the places I need it, and then I blend out. And I'll be blending it out with the Beauty Blender. This is the Pro one, which is why it's black. And that is definitely my favorite, probably, beauty tool of 2015. I had been using the Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge prior to this because I could not bring myself to spend $20 on a sponge, but there's a difference. And I just much prefer the Beauty Blender. It's a lot less dense, and I feel like it just blends better for me. Just blending a little bit of what's already on the sponge into my hairline because of my sunscreen, I tend to have to do this. I really love that Nearly Naked foundation because it just gives the perfect amount of coverage for me and my skin without looking like I'm wearing a bunch of makeup. Like it just looks, it makes my skin look better than my skin looks and I just love it. And even if it is discontinued or what have you, I have three more bottles on backup. Couple honorable mentions in the skin department. I've never been about the color correcting life because ain't nobody got time for that. I feel like my foundation should do that job without me having to do an additional step. However, for foundations that don't, I actually did find a color corrector that works for me. It's the Bobbi Brown Intensive Serum Concealer in the shade Deep Peach. This is not quite as orange as say the MAC Peach Luster Pen and the LA Girl Pro Concealer in Orange. Those didn't work for me. What I learned from trying those is you have to find a color corrector that matches the intensity of what you're trying to cover. So if something's too orange for the level of hyperpigmentation or discoloration that you have, it's only going to call more attention to it. This Bobbi Brown one is the perfect shade and pigmentation to correct the intensity of my discoloration, so I really loved it. The price is absolutely horrendous, but I was able to get it through um, a holiday sale for like quite a big discount. And there's, a, despite the small size, there's actually a lot of product in here, so I'm gonna use that until I can anymore, and hopefully it'll last me until next year when I can get it on another holiday sale. Other foundations I really love are the Charlotte Tilbury Light Wonder Foundation. This is in shade 10. The foundation colors do not correlate to the retoucher shade numbers, just FYI. However, shade 10 is now too dark for me. I think because I've been exfoliating, wearing, you know, mineral-based sunscreen and stuff for over a year, I got this in 2014 and it is now too dark for me. I wear it anyway in the summer, especially because it's just so beautiful and it just looks so nice, but it doesn't really match my skin tone anymore. And then shade nine is probably the right depth, but leans too pink. So I don't really have a good shade match for it, but I love the actual formula and the appearance of this foundation, even on my oily skin. Speaking of foundations for my oily skin, I also really like the Double Wear Light in shade five. This one's really good. It's not like completely matte, but it's sort of a skin-like finish. So I wouldn't say it's a mattifying foundation, which is why I tried it. Lisa Eldridge lumped it in with her favorite matte foundations. I wouldn't call it a matte one, at least not on me, but I think it's really good. It looks great. It's very similar in coverage level and even shade match to the Revlon Nearly Naked, but I, pref but I prefer the Revlon because it's cheaper and I also like that the, t the, t the consistency of the Revlon one is a little bit thinner and easier to blend out. But this one's really great too. And then when I do need to be like uber matte, like super duper matte, I go for this. This is the Becca Ever Matte Shine Proof Foundation. My shade is amber, except it isn't really my shade. The problem with Becca is none of their shades are really my shade. I find their shades to be a bit odd. They all pull a little too yellow or a lot too yellow or a little too red or a lot too red or too this or too that. But this one works well enough for me. And because it does stay matte, 
it's in the arsenal and it's in heavy rotation on days when I know I'm probably going to be at the office a long time and I know I have a shoot in the afternoon and I want to make sure that my skin isn't looking crazy shiny, this is what I go for. I haven't found another foundation that stays matte on me like this one and it just looks great when I know I need to be on camera but it's going to be several hours from when I was able to apply my makeup. Moving on to eyebrows. My favorite eyebrow pencil of 2015 is this, and it's also my favorite eyebrow pencil of all time. It's the It Cosmetics Your Brows But Better Universal Transforming Taupe. It's a skinny pencil. I believe they have redone these now in a range of colors. When this first came out in this packaging, this was the only color, which didn't matter to me because I love the color. I think it's great. It's just the right amount of cool and ashiness that I think looks good on my particular eyebrows but they still have this shade. I think it just looks like a different color or something on the outside, as well as other shades like they have, you know, brown, blonde, gray, all that crap now. I'm surprised at how long this pencil has lasted me because it is a minuscule amount of product in here for the price. I purchased it from Ulta when they were having a flash sale where it was half price for one day. So I got it for $12, I think, or $12.50, I can't quite recall. But that's kind of a recurring theme of all my high-end products. If I can get it on sale, that's when I get it. And otherwise, I'm probably going to get it not at all. The other piece of my ideal eyebrow equation is this. It's the Bobbi Brown Natural Brow Shaper in Mahogany. Yet another thing I got on a flash sale, this time from Macy's. During the holidays, they were having all sorts of really crazy deals. And also everything was shipping free, which was ridiculously good. So I got this for, I don't remember, maybe $16 or so. That's not what it normally costs, obviously, because it's Bobbi Brown, but I'm so glad that I picked it up. It was totally on a whim. I had not heard anything about this product, but I love it. It just adds the perfect amount of texture back into my brows after I filled them in, because you know how a pencil can sometimes sort of like flatten things out? This kind of brings your brows back to having some dimensionality and looking a little bit more believable after you filled them in with a pencil. I've tried a few other brow mascaras and brow tints and things, but this is by far the favorite of 2015 and thus far of all time. Of all time! 2000 was a year where I was kind of feeling like blush was not for me. I really was not feeling blush for some reason. I felt like I just wasn't liking how it looked anymore. I just thought it looked kind of ridiculous. But I did manage to find a few toward the second half of the year that were getting me back into blush a little bit again. And one is actually the Daniel Sandler Watercolor Blusher. I mentioned this and use it in a different get ready with me. This is in the shade Trip. It's a bright orange, and not only did this get me back into blusher to some extent, but it also got me back into orange because I've been hearing for years that orange blush looks great on women of color, women of color must wear orange blush, it's the best blush, blah, 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 blah. And then I kept trying orange blushes and it was absolute bullshit. Like everything looked insane and ridiculous on me. This one looks great, but I'm actually not gonna wear it today, sorry. The other runner up is the Ambient Lighting Blush by Hourglass. This is in the shade Radiant Magenta. Looks like that. I love this because it's not crazy pigmented. It's a very forgiving blush. I know people usually go after things that have the most intense pigments, and I agree with that for eye products and lip products. But when it comes to blush, I don't want to be afraid to actually put it on my cheeks. Like, I have a lot of NARS blushes, and those are so pigmented. I'm like this, like putting the brush into the pan because, like, I don't want to pick up too much product. Because with NARS blushes and other sleek blushes too from the UK, I mean, you can go from zero to do -do 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 in like two seconds. Which brings me to my favorite blush of 2015, which is by Burberry. Burberry's another luxury brand, so sorry about it, but um, I just love this blush. It is in the shade Tangerine, number six. I picked this up because I had a Nordstrom note for $20, and I was just like, well, this is the time to get a ridiculously expensive blush. So I just gave it a go and I fucking love it. It's just so nice. This particular blush is great because it's just a shade that gives you a nice warmth to the cheeks and doesn't scream, I'm wearing blush. I just like to kind of tap it along the apples of my cheeks and it may not even show up on camera, which in my opinion is not a bad thing, but in person, it just gives you the perfect amount of flush while not looking like makeup. This does exactly what I wanted it to do and I love it for that. I need to still conceal under my eyes as well, so let's do that. I'm gonna go in with my favorite concealer of all time. I have tried the NARS Creamy Radiant, hated it. 
As you can see, this has quite a bit of sort of like orangey peachy tones to it, which I think is what makes it so good for not only correcting my under eyes, but the areas where I'm generally applying foundation because as I said and as you saw I put my foundation on the places where I have discoloration because I'm trying to even out my skin tone and the peachy orangey tones in this are like correcting while also helping to even everything out and giving me the coverage so I love it. She recommends to blend this out with your fingers but I'm just not in the mood. I'm gonna add a little bit around my nose just because I tend to get some discoloration right in that crease there and on my mustache. This concealer is the only one that I find doesn't make my under eye area look dry. Like that NARS one makes my under eye look so dry. I took that shit right back to the step. And it doesn't crease. At least it hasn't creased on me. Nonetheless, I'm of course still going to set it. For the most part, I usually set my concealer with this Sonia Kashuk Brightening Powder. It's meant to be a dupe for the Laura Mercier under eye brightening powder. I can't compare the two, but I guess we can go ahead and call this one a favorite of 2015. Sweep that under my eye. So now we just have final steps of adding some dimension. I'm more about bronzer than contour. I very seldom contour, so I'm going to bronze with the Hourglass Bronzer. I have both shades, and today I'm using the Radiant Bronze Light. Favorite bronzers of all time and of 2015, obviously. Radiant Bronze Light is the darker shade of the two that they have. I love both. I'm using the darker one because I want you guys to be able to see the effect on camera, but for day to day, just seeing people face to face, I tend to reach for the Luminous Bronze Light. No runners up in the bronzer category. I'm Team Hourglass when it comes to bronzer. Another favorite of 2015 is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder. This is the shade Luminous Light. This is the one that I love. I also have the palette, but I don't even reach for that ever since I picked this one up in the... I think it was during the Fall Sephora sale in November. I've been using this pretty much every time I use my makeup ever since I got it. This product is great because it's it's much more subtle than an actual highlight. It's great for adding a luminosity to your face without adding glitter or frost or you know sheen that is just really in your face like check out this highlight can you see me from space and i also discovered on vacation because i don't really set my face with just regular powder too much even though i have oily skin i just don't care to it just does it's not that important to me but i noticed on vacation that if i set my entire face with this it will convert any shine i have to glow I was amazed. It was like I just dusted it on my face, just kind of, I just wasn't really even thinking about it. I was just, yeah, I guess I'll just dust this everywhere, even though I normally just put it on my cheeks. And I watched shine turn into glow before my very eyes. Another one that is a hefty price tag, but I feel like it's just worth it. And I usually just kind of sweep it up my cheeks like this. But again, for travel, you know, I tend to like to pack light, so I know that I'll be bringing this on my next trip and not even worrying about bringing any other powder because I don't need to look mad. I'm on vacation. I don't have to worry about being on camera or anything like that. And it'll just take down any shine and turn it into glow. Even though I just said I'm not super into highlight and glittery, you know, check out my highlight highlight, I actually do have a favorite highlighter of the year and it's one of my favorites because it's not like a highlight like that. It's not like the Mary Luminizer, the Betty Luminizer, where it's just like crazy, like in your face. It's again, Charlotte Tilbury. Sorry guys, I'm sensing a theme here with the Hourglass and Charlotte Tilbury, but this is the Charlotte Tilbury from her Norman Parkinson collection. This was a limited edition Dreamy Glow Highlighter Illuminating Youth Powder. I love this highlighter because, again, it's super subtle and it does exactly what it says. It's just a dreamy glow. You, I just would dust it on the tops of my cheekbones and it just created this dreamy glow. I mean, I just can't think of a better way to describe what this does and I'm so glad that I shelled out the dough for it because that usually is not the case when you buy expensive stuff. But yeah, this was absolutely worth it.
Let's get into honorable mentions for lips. As far as lips go, 2015 was kind of the year that I finally understood how great a nude can be. For the longest time for me, I thought nude lips were kind of stupid because it's like, just put on some Vaseline. But I found some that I love. One is Maybelline Nude Embrace. Obviously need a brown lip liner for this if you're a woman of color, but it's great. I also love Maybelline Nude Nuance. This one's a little darker and it's got more pink undertones. And my number one nude of 2015 would probably have to be Max Naturally Transformed. I love this lipstick. Um, I love it matte with just a brown liner. Usually I use the Espresso Liner by Ulta, but sometimes I'll also top it off with a nude gloss and it just looks great either way. And the last nude that I love is Kat Von D's Lolita, either formula, the Scented Kiss Lipstick or the Everlasting Lip Liquid Lipstick, which I have but I cannot find right now. Much like with orange on the cheeks, I've heard for years that orange on the lips looks great on women of color. Could not get it to work for me or find one that I liked, but I did finally find some nice orangey reds that I like, and the winner in that category would be Max Lady Danger, one of my all-time favorite lipsticks. As far as all-time favorite reds, I have way too many to count, but just to name a few, Max Riri Woo, which of course was limited edition. I don't have Ruby Woo, but I hear and have seen in YouTube videos that they're pretty much exactly the same anyway. And I also love Max Russian Red, but my 2015 favorite lipstick of the year is the Obsessive Compulsive Cut Cosmetics Ready to Wear Lip Tart in Anita. It completely took me out of my comfort zone. I normally have not been a fan of super dark lips on me, let alone like brown lipsticks. And this is like a nice red brown. And it really has just opened my eyes to a whole new color scheme that I actually do really like on myself. And I, I, I don't know, I've just had so much fun wearing this. I love it. It's been a lot more fun to have more color options to play with instead of my usual reds and, you know, occasionally pink lipsticks. As a matter of fact, I kind of fell out of love with pink lipsticks this year. Like me and blush and pink lipsticks have just been on the outs for 2015 and still now to a large extent. So here it is on Anita is definitely my favorite of the year, not just because of the color, but because of the new OCC ready to wear packaging. I've loved OCC lip tars for years, even since they were in this packaging. If you remember this, you know what I'm talking about. Like they used to have this thing where it looked like you were supposed to just put it on shit at the tube. And as far as I'm concerned, they are the originators of the liquid lipstick format. And I have loved them since they were in packaging like this but the new ready to wear packaging, it's less value for money because you're getting significantly less product than you did in these for not that much less money. I think it's only a $3 price difference. Ounce for ounce, not as good a value, but I don't care because obviously I'm never gonna finish one of these anyway because I've had these forever. And you know, I've accumulated more over the years, but I just love being able to just take this thing right out of the tube, not have to worry about finding a brush, put it on. I don't have to worry about even a lip liner with a lot of shades like Anita, so love this. All right, so I popped in my nose ring and put on some earrings and the hair is out of that messy braid and this is the finished look. Y'all have officially gotten ready with me. So now I've finally been able to get this video out to you guys with all of my beauty favorites of 2015 and they're on my face for the most part. Some of them I just mentioned, but most of them were on my face and that is it. I'll see you guys next time. I hope you guys are doing well and killing it in our final week of the Up Your Game Fitness Challenge. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check the description box. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys the next time I see you guys. Bye. That's a, that's a nappy headed hose there. I'm gonna take that down. <laughs>